So we're going to start off with the economic policy for the Soviet Union. Um, so there's two parts to the Soviet Union economic policy when Stalin came to power. The first was consolidation. So Stalin needed to find a solution to Russia's food source. He also needed to raise capital to fund the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and his, his solution to these problems was the idea of the consolidation where uh, in order to achieve this, he, uh, he removed the kulaks, the wealthier peasants in charge of food production. Uh, then he organized smalls into, fall, into small collectives. Uh, he, he organized small farms into one larger collective known as a can't speak Russian, but it looks like Kolk Haas, which used modern machinery and sold 90% of its produce to people for a low price. Now, consolidation was a failure because nearly 10 million people died of starvation. Um, and it set the countryside into chaos as well as creating many food shortages. The second part to his uh, economic policy was the industrialization, which took part, uh, which took the form of three five-year plans. Now, the first five-year plan occurred from 1928 to 1933 and focused on heavy industry such as coal, steel, oil, and gas. Uh, as part of this first five-year plan, uh, new dams and hydroelectric plants were built. Uh, the focus of heavy on history industry created shortages of many consumer goods, which angered a lot of German people. And by 1938, Russia had overtaken Germany and Great Britain in industrial output. Now, a lot of um, different uh, propaganda at the time encouraged the Russian people to complete the industrial um, the first industrial, the five-year plan in four years. And the problem was after Stalin had this first initial five-year plan, he turned around and introduced another one. And many of the, Germ uh, the Russian people felt cheated because they thought they were just gonna have one uh, five-year plan and then uh, they would all work really hard and get what they wanted to achieve. And then they would uh, do something new after that. Uh, so the second five-year plan occurred from 1933 to 1938 and was different because it encouraged women to work and it required foreign experts and engineers because of the purge of capitalists from earlier. And there was a push to, uh, to, to gain more equality in society. Now after that, the uh, third five-year plan, which occurred from 1938 to 1941, now it's not five years, uh, but that's because the Russian, uh, because the Germans invaded Russia in 1941. The original purpose of this plan was said to be to improve, uh, improve the quality of life for the Russian people by making more consumer goods, but in reality, it was to spend more money on defense. Finally, we have the social policy for Russia. The point of it was control the control of the media. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the social policies was controlling the media. Stalin was famous for controlling mass media uh, by the state. He also had long portions of the Russian history rewritten to make Stalin seem more favorable. And he had a lot of photographs doctored to remove counter-revolutionaries. Now, as far as education went, uh, Stalin controlled education. Everybody got nine free years of education, so they got nine free years of schooling. And people who questioned Stalin were imprisoned. Now, in the school system, they emphasized the need for sacrifice to better the communist state, so they tried to push their, their ideas within people at a young age. As far as women's rights went, uh, women were given more rights, uh, like being encouraged to work. This is kind of like a two-faced thing because her ability to work in factories for the Stalin's uh, Industrial Revolution. And finally, many minority groups were suppressed under Stalin, like the Kulaks, because they had their farm land stripped of them as rich peasants. Now we're going to go over to Lauren, who's going to tell you a little bit about Germany, Nazi Germany. So, Germany's main economic policy was their four-year plan that started in 1936 and went to 1939. The four priorities were to increase agricultural production, retain key sectors to the workforce, <laughs> government regulation of imports and exports, and to achieve self-sufficiency in the production of raw materials. The problem with the four-year plan, though, was that many people believed that the guy conducting it was not able to lead such a huge task. And also, uh, it was not fully supported by business leaders. They believed there should be some rearment, but not at the expense of the standard living in, <laughs> <Where's his shoes? laughs> living in Germany. 
Um, however, Hit Hitler did not want to change the person that was leading the project, and although he was sympathetic to the business leaders, uh, he at the same time wanted a wholesale rearmament. <laughs> Um, regardless of the obvious issues surrounding the four-year plan, he still got his way with constructing it. Um, and then on to Germany's social policies. Uh, so trade unions ensure that workers get fair wages and working conditions, but Hitler did not like the trade unions and he believed they supported socialism and communism, so they were banned from Germany in May of 1933, and the money was taken away from them and any of the leaders were arrested. Um, during the Republic before Hitler, women received a high standard of education, could earn wa good wages and jobs, and were allowed to vote. But once Hitler started reign, um, all of that changed, and only men had the right to make decisions. The three Ks that stood for women were Kinder, Critch, and Kuche, which were children, church, and kitchen. And there was something called the Mo Mother's Cross, which was determined by how many kids you had. And a bronze medal determined five kids, six to seven was a silver, and eight or more children gave you a gold medal. There were a few policies one of which was Lebensborn, and it meant that it was against the law for healthy mothers to have an abortion. Another thing was law for the prevention of hereditary diseased offspring, which would sterilize women that were unsuitable to have children. So it would mean if they weren't of the Aryan race. Um, the German women's enterprise was controlled by the Nazis, and its work was to organize mothers' schools to train women how to be parents and housewives. Go faster, Kayla, to go. Uh, the aim of education was to separate Jews from other children, encourage hated, hatred towards the Jews, prevent Jews from the getting of education. And now for <laughs> Kayla's turn. Why did you have to? Okay. The bell's going to ring in like three minutes. Four minutes. Okay, so now on to China. Um, China's economic policies included nationalization of, of an abundance of private enterprise, um, opening of the People's Bank, taxation of peasants and collectivism, um, and then uh, so <laughs> agrarian reform law. Um, it spread up the process of land reform and later stripped the land rights of peasants. Um, from 1953 on, the government party made great efforts to get peasants to join co cooperatives. Um, communal farm or cooperatives or communal farms that you get paid um, rent for land and um, they pay you, the government pays you for your work, which was a good idea because um, you still own your land, you're just renting it to the government, but um, the communists wanted more so they didn't stop there, um, making bigger and higher cooperatives by joining cooperatives together um, and people were forced to then join these. So by 1956, almost 100% of peasants were landless again and a part of these cooperative farms. Um, so, um, some more economic policies were the first five-year plan, um, which was created to build new production plants and increase output. The second five-year plan, the goal was to develop agriculture and industry, consisted of the, um, which consisted of the Chinese commune system, um, and the Chinese commune system was uh, all-encompassing collective farms and work units. So now on to China's social policies. Um, so thought reform was the movement for the study of the Mao Zedong thought, which was one of the um, social policies in China. Um, mass campaigns like the three antis and the five antis campaigns, where people were found guilty of um, crimes like bureaucracy, waste, corruption, and then the five antis were um, bribery, theft of state property, um, theft of state property, tax evasions, cheating on government documents, and stealing state economic information. Um, another example would be people that were caught of these would um, be sent to a thought re-education camp. So the Hundred Flowers campaign was where Mao allowed some free speech for six weeks. Um, many people spoke harshly towards Mao, and he, as he was no longer as um, very popular, which angered him, and then in June of 1957, he Mao cracked down. Um, 
So an abundance of tech, uh, uh, not technology, an abundance of propaganda was used to incentivize workers to overachieve goals and also to recruit the young. Um, Mao believed school to be a waste of time and that teachers were against the revolution. So kids um, stopped going to school. Um, and since the kids stopped going to school, they had more time on their hands to succumb to propaganda and join the Red Guard. Um, the Red Guards shut down schools uni um, and universities and began breaking down the homes of the wealthy and took their things. Um, people who were thought to have special privileges went to camps where they were worked to death. Um, they wanted to rid the world, the Red Guard and Mao wanted to rid the world of the four old um, or old culture, customs, habit, or ideas were all destroyed. Um, the Red Guard wanted to smash into face and steal valuables and personal possessions. That's our video, thanks. Thank you.